And his photograph actually does have that in prison. That's really interesting because, like, do you think that that comes in the back if you expect that there will be a Ferrigraph lead? Ferrigraph was something that Wolf relied upon in his stream matchup, not only to reverse the Trick Room, but also just to make sure that it can that can, it can help kind of stop some of these priority attacks, which you love to see the Tornadus on the other side for that reason. Yeah, Nicholas opts for a really offensive lead here, right? With Tornadus and Ogre Pond, you could theoretically just tailwind and target the Urshifu slot with a Grass-type attack. Wolf's solution to get around this is to set up that Trick Room and switch out as you can see he's considering. So uh, this could be really, really good for Wolf if Nicholas ends up clicking Tailwind on turn one. So do you take that risk? Uh, I mean, you have to risk it, I think, especially if you walked away with some of that knowledge from the first set. Maybe you're looking at Nicholas having a preference to want to set up the Trick Room because of something like the, the Blood Moon in the back or just knowing that you, he has to go for a faster mode like this. So it is going to be the Tailwind and the Wood Hammer into the Incineroar, which takes that so, so comfortably. And we will see that this Trick Room pays off in dividends after that Tailwind goes up. Yeah, that's a dream scenario for Wolf there. You don't lose your Urshifu, you get Trick Room in, you have so many turns to work with. It's uh, now Frigograph time to just click Hyper Voice. Incineroar can do a lot here. You can go for Flare Blitz and just cover for switches. So uh, Nicholas now needs to stall out this Tailwind. I think uh, the big problem here is with Tailwind, even the slower Pokemon you might have in the back, like that Ursaluna, like that Iron Hands, uh, like your own Frigograph, are still going to be slower. And so a knockoff is such a nice move here because it kind of covers for anything that you can switch into and so uh, right now Nicholas is in a really awkward spot where you're looking to stall out your own tailwind you're not also offering that much offense on your side with that an immediate intimidate onto Ogre Pond but Ogre Pond's going to switch out here to try to get rid of that intimidate and it's going to be Ferrigarath that takes its place so we it was a fake out into that slot it can't happen anymore because of the armor tail ability now being out on the field but doesn't mean that Wolf's Ferrigarath can't start dealing damage you get the hyper voice off into both targets and now that throat spray is going to activate to give Ferger off a special attack boost. Tornadus here does get some free damage with the Bleak Wind Storm. So all things considered, I think a pretty strong turn for Nicholas. Uh, Wolf had the opportunity to maybe fish for a knockoff onto um, either Tornadus or the Ogre Pond switch there, but wanted to just make sure Ogre Pond didn't get any damage off that turn and protect for a graph. You know, that prevents something like a Ogre Pond terroring and then actually threatening for a graph with a lot of damage. And so uh, I think Wolf's still in a really commanding spot because Hyper Voice just looks so good right now. Uh, there is that knockoff pressure onto for graph as well, but it is very Terra for a graph on the opposing end. So you could consider going for it, but no no Terra here means Fergraph's just almost going to faint. A Hyper Voice surely will finish it off. Yeah, it's nice too because you knock off the Citrus Barrier so you don't even have the HP recovery and whether or not that would have been enough. The Hyper Voice is not enough to take out the Tornadus so it can go for another Bleak Wind Storm here and it will miss the Incineroar so a little bit of critical damage down onto the Pokemon that, that Incineroar gets to stick around and also pivot off the field for another Intimidate drop onto the Ogre Pond later. So Ursaluna Blood Moon does hit the field, but the speed dynamic is still really awkward because Tailwind is up on Nicholas' end. And, and so that's why like that turn one was just such a winning play for Wolf. Uh, Nicholas wanted to play aggressive, get rid of Urshifu. If you get rid of Urshifu, like as you see, all of Nicholas's Pokemon don't take Surging Strike super well. Uh, you know, so it was a risk let. I think he found worth taking, but Wolf decides to just set up Trick Room. And uh, this turn is still really awkward, right? Because you're slower, if you're right ends with Hyper Voice. There's nothing on Nicholas's team that really resists this Hyper Voice. And so it's also really powerful. Uh, uh, and then you've got the uh, knockoff pressure as well. So, uh, yeah, really commanding position right now for Wolf. And uh, Nicholas probably wants to protect the Blood Moon at least this turn, stall out Tailwind as Tornadus pivots out. Well, it's a nice pivot, though. The Tornadus gets off the field, and now the Ogre Pond can take its place, which you look at that, and it could be a little risky if Wolf had decided to target down that Tornadus slot. But we are going to see a committal of the Terrastalization and uh, it's gonna end up being the normal type here for that Blood Moon Ursa Luna, making potentially a Hyper Voice even just a little bit stronger. Yeah, so Terra implies no Protect here, just looking for as much damage as possible, try to accelerate the pace of this battle a little bit, uh, but it's gonna take so much damage as well and lose its item. Yeah, so now that that Life Orb is gone, I don't know how much damage this Ursa Luna is really gonna be able to do here, oh, especially oh, because oh, the oh, Psychic Frigoraph. is just gonna knock it out. Wow, that Throat Spay really helped it out there. Yeah, that was so much damage. I thought the Ursa Luna would be able to survive that, but the double Same. actually just secures the knockout. And so uh, this is why I was saying, I think like Protect would be quite nice. You stall out your own Tailwind and uh, stall in another turn of Trick Room. But yeah, I think this was just a Ferrigoraph masterclass. It put in so much work here. And uh, Nicholas has a counter to it, right? I think if Nicholas leads his own for a graph you can go for imprison to stop the trick room on wolf's end but uh yeah nicholas just has struggled to deal damage in this game so far because uh, wolf just has such a good speed
speed advantage. Yeah, we're gonna see the Tailwind go up again. So Nicholas just preserving the Hearthflame Ogre Pond just to give it its best effort. Make sure that it's not gonna take any damage this turn. And also the Parting Shot doesn't go off here from the Incineroar, so it can't pivot out either. Hyper Voice, though, will knock out this Tornadus, and it's all down to this Ogre Pond to try to get the job done. Yeah, this game basically has felt like a big uphill battle for Nicholas right from turn one. It was such a disastrous turn one, and then uh, the Ursaluna Blood Moon just getting knocked out like that basically, I think, prevented any chance of a comeback. Uh, Ogre Pond here just not strong enough to deal enough damage across the board, and so uh, this was Wolf doing a really good job of calling out, hey, I'm just going to go set up Trick Room, uh, but also threatening with Urshifu, right? If you lead something like Incineroar for a graph or Rillaboom for a graph, Trick Room seems a lot more obvious, but I think from Nicholas's end, he was really scared because you have to cover for Choice Scarf Urshifu, Fu, right? Choice Scarf Urshifu puts in so much work, and so uh, trying to get that KO immediately, but Wolf doesn't give it to him and sets up Trick Room, and yeah, that turn one play alone puts him in such a good spot. Yeah, now you get a chance to just bring the Incineroar back out here if you want. You also have another Pokemon in the back, but I feel like Incineroar not only gets the Intimidate drop, but you can just go for the Fake out here and just finish the game. Yeah, Furigraph looked amazing in this game. Like, yeah. It did almost all the damage across Hyper Voice and Psychic, uh, and also set up the Trick Room. And so, if you're Nicholas and you go back to the drawing board, well, the obvious solution is to lead your Ferrigraph, right? With that, you at least pressure with your own um, Trick Room slash Imprison, which is a really nice combination. But you also need to be able to deal damage, right? I think, like, the problem for Nicholas in this game was that uh, none of the Pokemon really got too many attacks off. It was really Tornadus only clicking Bleak Wind Storm mm -hmm. that dealt damage in this game. So, it needs to be a more effective solution to be able to hit early on. Uh, and so, yeah, I think like you can look towards uh, kind of pivoting towards Ferrigraph, but I suspect that Wolf might play a faster mode in game two, thinking Nicholas is going to adjust by bringing Ferrigraph. I think Ferrigraph would be great here. I think also maybe just, I, I wonder if like, if you bring the Ferrigraph and maybe you just like set up the, the Blood Moon on the field, like maybe you're able to kind of uh, figure out a way to figure out the Trick Room setup. Yeah, Blood Moon is interesting. I think, like, the scary thing about leading it is if Wolf just leads that Urshifu again, you yeah, kind of feel forced protect. to Terra or Switch. And one of the key things to note on Nicholas's team is that there's actually no Surging Strikes resist. And so that's why Wolf prioritized leading Urshifu, right? You put on a lot of offensive pressure immediately with it. And so and if you look at the Terra types as well, uh, there's only one Pokemon that can defensively Terra on Nicholas's team, and that's Iron Hands with that Grass Terra. We were talking about Iron Hands. It's an interesting pick. I think it's scary to bring because Fake Out loses a lot of its value you when your opponent has a fear graph but wild charge close combat heavy slam still deal decent damage right and wolf clearly prioritized bringing incineroar out in that last game if you're able to catch an incineroar switch in and just ko it with close combat uh that's where hands i think has a lot of value and so yeah, yeah i think nicholas definitely has tools on his team but uh, you can't kind of just lose the speed war like that on turn one because it's just a complete disaster like the game might have even played out differently if at least tailwind doesn't get set up curious how fast the Ursaluna saluna blood moon is on his team can it outspeed for a graph and incineroar on wolf's end I would love to see if Iron Hands comes here. I, I love what you're talking about in terms of the defensive Terra. My only hesitation is that, like, if Wolf expects that and you force out a Terra from the Iron Hands, there are ways to play around that and just punish the Terrestrialization on the Iron Hands. Especially because it's a Salt Vest, but that also wouldn't help when I'm looking at Hearthflame, Ogre Pond, as well as Incineroar here. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I think if, if I'm Nicholas, I'm thinking of dropping Tornadus as a lead. Uh, I'm thinking of leading Ferrigraph. Uh, Dark Urshifu didn't come out in that last game, but that actually puts on immense pressure into Ferrigraph specifically, right? Mm -hmm. Might force a Terra out of that. So uh, Dark Urshifu, Ferrigraph, Iron Hands are kind of three Pokemon I'm looking at in terms of what you might want to lead with. Uh, but, you know, Ogre Pond feels really strong. It forces the switch out, but then it's just so weak into Incineroar afterwards. Yeah, with all the parting shots, cycling through the fake outs, definitely felt like it was an uphill battle, especially at the end of that game. And lo and behold, it is going to be the Furigraph and the Iron Hands for Nicholas and Wolf with the Furigraph and the Urshifu once again. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic adjustment by Nicholas. It's exactly what I was trying to hint at. And so here's the thing now, right? Like Urshifu does have this Surging Strikes. It is really, really powerful. You can see Wolf deciding between Water Terra uh, and Surging Strikes and the Iron Hands or Close Combat. But the main thing here is basically, do we think the Iron Hands will Terra on turn one, right? And so let's see if there's a Terra. Okay. Oh, we're going to have to see Wolf's Terra first. <laughs> <laughs> so sadly, we have to wait just a couple more seconds as it's going to be the Urshifu that takes on the Terra water. Wolf really wants to just put on the pressure with this Urshifu, maybe even expecting an Imprison to come out from Nicholas's side. But there's there the Terra. Is a terra. Okay. So 
like I said, there's only one real resist to water type attacks on Nicholas's team, and it's uh, something that needs the terror in order to get there. But yep. it is going to be the grass terror on the iron hands. Make sure that that surgeon strikes does not deal neutral damage. And it's going to be the helping hand Ooh. as well. So choosing not to go for the imprison here, making a very aggressive play. For Graph does protect. Looks like Nicholas is nodding. I think he expected this. And if it's wild charge onto Urshifu, it's an amazing trade, especially because Wolf opted for that surgeon strikes, did not go for that close combat. Iron hands takes that like an absolute champion. Yeah, Iron Hands doesn't need an Assault Vest to still be a tanky Pokemon. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, it That's takes 25% such... with water <laughs> Maybe terror. a little less, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, it's just not nearly enough. It is a close combat, though. But hey, either one of those would have gotten the job done. A one-hit knockout onto Wolf's Urshifu and Iron Hands sitting pretty. I actually love that close combat play. I think you probably don't need Helping Hand in order to pick up the KO with Wild Charge, but what Nicholas was covering for was basically any combination of attacks. By going for close combat, you cover for a Rillaboom switch in, you knock out Incineroar, you might even knock out Rillaboom, honestly, with that combination. Yeah. So, brilliant play. And Nicholas's Frigraph now is putting in so much work. In the previous game, it was Wolf's Frigraph flying pressure, but this Helping Hand, so much pressure. Uh, the Frigraph on the opposing end can go for that Imprison as well. And critically, it's blocking Fake Out from Wolf's Rillaboom right now. And this Rillaboom here does have U turns. So you can thread in maybe a knockout onto Iron Hands with U turn and Hyper Voice. Looks like that's what Wolf's opting for. Uh, my question then is how fast are all these Pokemon relative to each other? Iron Hands might actually be a little bit speedy here. Yeah, it could operate outside of Trick Room. That is something that I feel like catches a lot of people off guard, but especially with something like the Clear Amulet, just maybe. Nicholas is going to full send it here, hoping that this Iron Hands is going to be faster or maybe even knows. It is the Wood Hammer, and it's just not going to be enough damage, but is the Iron Hands faster? Oh, no, it's slower than oh, It does get knocked out, yeah! What? Oh, that's what I was saying about the speed interactions. Oh, I wonder if that speeder interaction came out at any point in their previous matches. And so uh, Wolf immediately equalizes the field there. But if the Iron Hands is faster there, Helping Hand close combat probably just secures a knockout onto either of the slots. I would be confident on Kaelin Rillaboom. Maybe Furograph can survive. But that's obviously a huge, huge turn for Wolf there. But I uh, definitely can see what Nicholas was going for. If you are end up faster than either of the Pokemon, you're in such good shape. But Urshifu comes out now. And that's a pretty darn good Pokemon to have into a Furograph, which no longer can terror at this point. I think the Urshifu is very well positioned here. You, you're still going to take a lot of damage, though. I think the Rillaboom is threatening big damage onto both the Furograph and the Urshifu. But the, Furig uh, the Urshifu has a Focus Sash, so you know you can hang on to at least one attack. And Urshifu tends to be pretty fast as well. So Furograph on Nicholas's side is just going to go for the Helping Hand to boost up some of this damage. And it is going to be a Wicked Blow. Aiming into the Rillaboom, and that will be a quick knockout. Yeah, really impressive damage output here from all the Helping Hand boosts, right? Just able to secure these one-hit knockouts. So Trick Room is set up, but what makes this hard is the ability for Nicholas to potentially reverse that Trick Room. So now the question is, do you secure a knockout onto uh, the Furgraf with a Hyper Voice knockoff combo, right? Because the problem is, how do you deal with Focus Sash, Urshifu, as well as Furigraf? You can guarantee a knockout onto one of the two slots, but because there's Focus Sash on Urshifu, you're going to have to double up onto a slot to get a knockout here. So Nicholas can try and try to reverse the Trick Room. The question is basically, do you make the call and protect your Urshifu? And does Urshifu end up uh, yeah, protecting here? If it does protect, uh, and Furgraph reverses Trick Room, I think the game is just immediately over. So you can see Wolf basically has to make the decision, do I target Furgraph or do I target Urshifu? He's going for the Urshifu lock here. Okay, oh, okay. Well, there's no gonna protect. get it as the Flare Blitz is able to hit into the Urshifu without that Protect active. And now the Furigraph gets a chance to follow that up with a Hyper Voice, and it will be a knockout onto the Urshifu. But the Furigraph here still has yet to make a move. But well, we gotta see the berry activate first before we get a chance to see <laughs> what this Furgraph has gone for. Citrus Berry, nice to be able to get some HP recovery back as the Trick Room gets reversed. All right, I'm thinking if it's fast Blood Moon here in the back, uh, enough to outpace the Incineroar and Furgraph, I think Nicholas is gonna be in a really nice spot. So uh, let's see if it indeed is that Blood Moon as the final Pokemon. All right, it's there gonna it be is. in the Air Saluna. What a nice call. Still need to. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know how you deal with that. We saw how much the Psychic did to the Ursa Luna. Yep. It was plenty to be able to get the knockout from about, like, what, 60, 70%? Yeah. So I think this Ursa Luna still has to be a little careful. 
All right, the big question here is the speed interactions, right? If you're reversing Trick Room, I think you'd want to feel confident that you're faster here with the Ursa Luna. So speed actually matters a lot in this matchup. And uh, the other question is with Ursa Luna, who do you target, right? I think yeah. you could go for something like a Helping Hand Earth Power to secure the knockout onto Incineroar. Uh, and then if you're confident you're faster than Frigorath, then you can go for something like Helping Hand plus Blood Moon. Uh, critically, Wolf's Frigorath actually does have Protect, and so you can protect in front of a Blood Moon, uh, which would be a big deal because then you're not able to go for it the next turn. But uh, Wolf's deciding, oh, he's coming so close on time there. No, okay, just geez. locks it in. There's the helping hand though. All right. Well, we saw the helping hand for the iron hands and it was not able to be faster, but the blood moon is faster this time around. And with that blood moon into the incineroar, that will be a knockout. Plenty of damage. Can't go for that blood moon attack again on that next turn, but you take the knockout here. The psychic though into this Ursaluna oh is going goodness. to allow it to hang on, but that's a lot of damage. Oh wow, this is gonna be a really close it's finish. 80%. Yeah, I was kind of surprised to see Blood Moon come out there onto Incineroar instead of Earth Power, because I think Earth Power would have just secured that knockout with Helping Hand since it's super effective, and then you get to Blood Moon the Frigraph now. But yep, here's Helping Hand coming out once again, but you can't go for Blood Moon anymore. It's got to be a Hyper Voice or an Earth Power. That's a single target Hyper Voice. Oh, it is going to bring the Frigraph to 14 HP. What? Is the Hyper Voice in response? Knocks out the Ursaluna, but Nick's Frigraph is still on the field. I just don't know if it's going to be able to outpace here. Oh my it's goodness. Is the Dazzling Gleam enough? Yeah, it, it, there's no more grassy terrain, so it's single target Dazzling Gleam. My guess is it does do enough. Nicholas's photograph appears to be faster. Here we go, Dazzling Gleam, and it secures the knockout as we go to a game three here. You can say to Nicholas, <laughs> take a huge sigh of relief, and what a game two. That was completely different from game one. I love the adjustments that he made here with that Iron Hands, with that photograph. It's what I was calling out going into this game, and what masterful play there. A lot of big speed interactions there as well, right? We saw how yeah. fast Iron Hands is, or I should say how slow it is relative to some of Wolf's Pokemon. It got out, outsped by that Rillaboom, and it got outsped by that Furigraph. But then we saw that the Blood Moon on Nicholas's team is actually faster than the Incineroar and the Furigraph. So the speed dynamics in this game are so intense. Yeah, absolutely. And then, like, I think looking at the Furigraph, too, now that you know that speed interaction, uh, it's really, really important here. I, I'm so impressed by the adjustment that Nick made in that second game. It, it was perfect. It was perfect. And even like, even though you lost the Iron Hand so early, could you imagine if it had actually been faster? And you still now know that your Iron Hands will not be able to outpace that Rillaboom. Totally. I think. Frigraph and Iron Hands clearly seems to be a really effective lead. So if I'm Wolf, I'm immediately looking at Ogre Pond because Ogre Pond can go for Fire Terra and threaten it with offense immediately, right? So uh, I think Urshifu falls really, really short into the Iron Hands with Grass Terra, but Ogre Pond here can put on a lot of offensive pressure immediately. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that's the immediate adjustment I'm thinking of. Uh, I think for Wolf, the Fluttermane in this matchup just doesn't really contribute too much value. It's a calm mindset, but mm -hmm. you kind of just get dunked on by Iron Hands with that Heavy Slam. So would be surprised to see that make an appearance, but I think essentially Wolf needs a little bit more offensive pressure into Iron Hands and into Furigraph. If anything, if I'm Wolf, I think I'm actually prioritizing knocking out the Furigraph on Nicholas's end because that caused so many problems, right? Wolf's team loves going for the priority fakeouts with Incineroar and Rillaboom, uh, as well as Grassy Glide on the Rillaboom, and so if you're able to eliminate Furigraph on Nicholas's end, which does not have Protect, then it opens the game completely up for you. Yeah, you have to make a lot of calls, though, because Furigraph still has Imprison. Yep. Um, so I think that's something else that Wolf still needs to keep in mind that would lock uh, his own Frigorath out of being able to use Trick Room and uh, that, I don't know, it just felt like that was such an important part of that game number two that you still have to keep that in mind. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, Nicholas could adjust with something like Iron Hands Urshifu as a lead, but uh, you might just feel more comfortable leading for a graph the entire time, honestly. I'm curious if he ever decides to go back to Tailwind. Another approach you could make if you expect Ogre Pond is to, like, knock out Wolves for a graph yeah. and then set up Tailwind. Then Bleak Wind Storm becomes really strong. So I think there are a lot of different ways both players can adjust here, but I would expect an Ogre Pond adjustment from Wolf's end. Well, we've got a game number three our first one of the Charlotte Regional Championships. That's right, everybody on alert as Nick and Wolf are going to be kicking off this game three with both Ogre Pond Hearthflame on the field, but Nicholas is gonna just lead the Blood Moon Ursaluna right away. Wow, this is really interesting. It's kind of rare to see, I feel like, Ursaluna being led like this, but critically, Nicholas's Ogre Pond does have that follow me. So 
Hyper Voice and Follow Me here is actually really, really powerful. Uh, I think the, the main thing I'm thinking about here is if you're Nicholas, do you consider going for a Terra with Ogre Pond just to play defensively, right? If you go yeah. for that Terra, then you can go for Follow Me of your own turn one and then go for a Hyper Voice, for example. And so a uh, lot of immediate offensive pressure from both ends here. And I think the other thing to think about, I'm wondering what Nicholas has in the back, because let's say Wolf doesn't set up Trick Room right now. If you bring out Tornadus and then you tail him with it, then the Ursaluna becomes, I think, a really, really scary deal. But here's the Terra to start. Oh, the Terra onto the Hearthflame Ogre Pond means it is going to get an attack boost. And so you, that definitely feels really, really good, knowing that there is no clear way to be able to knock uh, to, to knock that attack back down on Nicholas's side. But it's oh, going it to be is another Terra, yeah. Terra onto the Hearthflame Ogre Pond as well. But more importantly, Wolf's Terra first. Yes. Oh, this is a really big play already. Well, let's see, does the Ursaluna protect? Because you could protect and just Ivy Cudgel into Phoregraph here. Well, Fergaraf is going to go for the Protect first, so it really doesn't want to catch any of this smoke. Oh, but no follow just, me! No follow me, no Protects on Nicholas's side. This the is Ivy KO. Cudgel just goes into the oh, Ursula. <laughs> no it's... way it survives here! The mm. Ivy Cudgel in response is going into the Fergaraf, but that Blood Moon Ursaluna gets away with another attack with oh, the Iron Power the into the super effective post-Terra! One hit survival there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we are off to a start here in game three. I think it fades from life four. Let's see. Yep, it does. Okay. But uh, Nicholas has his Terra still, whereas Wolf does not. That's a big advantage. And the Frugraph just protected. So you can target that slot safely. Urshifu, though, a really nice answer here into the Ogre Pond, which just Terra'd. And so now I'm curious, is there a Tornadus hiding in the back? If you have Tornadus, you can actually just Tailwind uh, and go for damage, obviously. So <laughs> uh, Urshifu here also could be a decent switch in from Nicholas's end. But uh, yeah, the water Urshifu in the back here is huge for Wolf to pressure Ogre Pond. And ooh, it's going to be Frigoraph. That's going to be a really nice Pokemon for a Wolf to see, I think, because now the Surging Strikes onto Ogre Pond is super free. Yeah, you can't protect the Ogre Pond here because it is going to take that damage through the Protect thanks to Urshifu's ability. And Wolf just gets to full send all of this damage. Nicholas wants to preserve that Hearth Flame Ogre Pond for later, so we will see it retreat back into its Pokeball. But the Iron Hand's now going to hit the field in its stead. Surging Strikes is still going to do a little bit of damage, but the Iron Hand takes that so comfortably. Yeah, that's the best switch in into Surging Strikes that I think Nicholas has on his team. Doesn't even take 50% from it. And so, oh man, this is a really, really intense game three. Hyper Voice is not going to do that much right now, but of course, uh, the Throat Spray boost now means it is a huge offensive monster. And we saw Wolves for a graph move first here, so I should imply Trick Room on the opposing end. There it is. Yeah, Trick Room is going to help bolster up this Iron Hands' ability. You have the Iron Hands on the field just to be able to pressure down with a lot of the attacks that we saw before. And what a perfect position for this Iron Hands to be in, knowing that it is going to be fastest thing on the field. Exactly, yeah. That's where that speed interaction earlier was a really big deal. So, okay, Wolves opting for Protect for Igraf. He's, you know, I think the main debate here is do you Protect? Do you want to click that Hyper Voice instead? You could also try to reverse Trick Room. From Nicholas's end, though, you have a really explosive play of Helping Hand Close Combat onto for Igraf. So my other question is, is Wolves Frigoraph bulky enough to survive that, because if not, it would be a complete disaster to just get knocked out. So uh, the question here is, yeah, do you want to stay in? Do you want to switch into the Incineroar? And do you want to protect the Frigoraph here? He's just going to attack with both, so prioritizing getting the knockout, it looks like, onto the Iron Hands here. It would be really nice to be able to get that job done, but Nicholas gets a chance to move first, the Helping Hand, to increase his Iron Hands' attack output as the close combat goes into the Urshifu. Wanted to prioritize that as one of the big damage threats to that Hearthflame Ogre Pond that's waiting in the back. Yeah, I think that play makes a lot of sense because it covers for Furigraph protecting, but Wolf makes the call to not protect there. Hyper Voice comes out, look how much damage it does, and uh, Wolf actually now in a nice spot. Like, Nicholas set up that Trick Room, but Wolf's got Incineroar as his final Pokemon, so uh, Ogre Pond here is going to eat up that Intimidate, which is a big deal. And there's not that much damage to threat in Incineroar right now. So uh, Wolf making a really nice call there, right? I think if you switch in your Incineroar there, or you end up protecting with Frigoraph would be a disaster, but correctly assesses the situation and manages to secure the knockout onto Iron Hands. And Incineroar is the final Pokemon here from Wolf's end. So it's been a crazy game of trade so far, but I think Wolf in a better position right now, thanks to his Frigoraph being so well positioned. Yeah, I agree. I, I think this is a really nice place for the Furgraph. It's probably faster in Trick Room than this Ogre Pond. Yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah.
Uh, and I think, yeah, like Incineroar is the final, perfect final Pokemon here. Wolf dropping Rillaboom was really key. If you have Rillaboom here, I think the game actually becomes more challenging. So uh, Nicholas caught in a tricky spot right now. One play, you could make a spiky shield reverse your own trick room. And okay, looks like that's what he's Ooh. going for potentially. He has to try. He really has to try here. And Cinderor is going to go for the parting shot as well, just to be able to drop that Ogre Pond's attack. It is at neutral because of the Embody Aspect boost and the Intimidate drop, but the Hyper Voice as well, just to try to do some damage. Vergraph on the other side is going to take Whoa, a lot, but it so is close. a survival to go ahead and reverse that Trick Room. Yeah, I think the, the challenging thing for Nicholas is you still don't have that much damage, right? So, like, you could just go for Protect here. Uh, yeah, looks like that's what he was considering. Protect and knock off onto Frigraph just to guarantee the knockout feels safe. Uh, Nicholas, his best bet then would be something like... You, you actually could go for a Follow Me here, but yeah, it's going to be a helping hand. I think he's hoping to catch one of these Pokemon off guard. Incineroar is kind of the safer target. You need damage onto it, but it uh, mm. looks like Nicholas... You know, shakes his head there, probably targeting for a grab. Uh, Incineroar was kind of the perfect final Pokemon for Wolf to have here, and him not switching it in earlier, not falling bait to that close combat was a really big deal. Yeah, the knockoff to finish off the Furigraph means that Ogre Pond is left by itself, and after such a hard-fought battle, wow, this was an explosive best of three. It was so explosive. I wonder how differently this game would have played out if Nicholas had actually just gone for follow me on turn one and then launched the Earth Power into Ogre Pond. He made some really nice calls in this game, but uh, Blood Boon is such a big win condition for him. So here's Ivy Cudgel, who doesn't get a critical hit. That's a lot of damage on a Frigoraf, but not even with the crit. Uh, comes really close to getting that KO. So Psychic on Ogre Pond does a lot there, and then Knock Off will finish things off here as Wolf Blick advances. Still does not drop a set in this tournament. 12-0. Nicholas